So that is the entire Saturn V rocket and the moonshot. So this is the mighty Saturn V rocket. The thing that actually put men to the moon and brought men back again in that little capsule up there. And just so you know, the whole thing was built around three men essentially sitting down. That was what all of this was for. And if I remember rightly, it's about it's 80 or 90 percent of the entire mass of the rocket is fuel. And the only bit that comes back to Earth is that tiny bit of, I forget what it was called, command module or something, um, at the very top. And I think it's, I think it's either 1% or 0.1%, I forget which, of the entire mass of the rocket actually ever came back to Earth. And the amazing thing is, and right, these put men on the moon, last men on the moon were early 1970s. And this music center that the whole thing is stood on <laughs> is from the early 80s um, and I remember being amazed by this at the time it's just the, the technology that would actually allow that sort of thing just to happen and and uh, how it had buttons that made things light up and some buttons that stopped others and others didn't do it. just went in okay, so was this this to me when I was a kid was an amazing piece of technology and that happened some at least 10 years after men had been to the moon in this thing. So, um, the other great uh, design feature of these is it had these giant heavy lift rockets. And this was really what enabled the Americans to get to the moon and not the Russians. The Russians didn't have a big rocket like this. They had to do it, um, they had to do it all on little rocket engines. And it didn't really quite ever work. So, First stage burn was kerosene and oxygen, if I remember mm. rightly. And just so we're clear, these engines consume about 13 tons of fuel every second. And you can probably put about 0.1 of a kilo of lighter fuel to light up your barbecue. And that can put out quite a lot of heat. Well, this is using about 100,000 times as much fuel every second. I mean, these are just truly awesome machines um, and all these stages burned each stage burnt for a couple of minutes I forget the details anyway so the first stage doesn't even really get you out of the atmosphere um, and then you get up to the second stage which is again five rockets much smaller but everything from the apart from the first stage was liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen apart from the um, lunar module which needed um, reliability more than the efficiency of the thrust so five of these smaller rockets this would burn for uh, another couple of minutes and then you would separate out the third stage which if I'm not right still wouldn't be in lunar in earth orbit and this engine and these engines are exactly the same and this would burn for a bit longer and that would get you into a lower earth orbit when they would basically check everything was fine if anything went wrong anywhere along the way what would happen is you know if the rocket blows up or goes off course or anything like that is this rocket here would fire and that would actually lift the very top off the rocket including the three guys in I forget what it's called the command module yeah so once uh, it was in Earth orbit, it would fire again, and that would take you on the, whatever, the intersection orbit, or whatever they call them, between Earth orbit and lunar orbit. Um, and once that had fired and burned off most of the fuel, um, this section would separate, and this section would separate, and this would fly off into space in, in a couple of pieces. So let's put on the third stage up there now. And what would happen is the command module turns around and it docks with the lunar module. Um, and if I, I forget the, the details of the burns, but once it gets into um, near, near the moon, this fires again and that slows the whole thing down and puts it basically into lunar orbit. 
at which point this guy separates off it fires its braking motor um, which drops it out of lunar orbit gets it to descend down to the lunar surface, the legs obviously extend and then it uses the rocket motor again to actually land um, and then the men did their stuff on the lunar surface and when they had finished uh, they all get back in this thing um, and the top bit separates off so you get an idea of just how much um, you know, there's two men in there and the rocket, the fuel and everything else and that's based around three men sitting down anyway so this bit gets back up to orbit at which point it docks with this the so the base isn't on this anymore um, the men transfer across this is then ditched completely so you've now just got three men sitting down in here it fires the rocket again and that takes it back to earth gives it enough velocity to get out of uh, lunar orbit gets it back to earth and then last of all is this guy if I can do it, there we go so, there's the lunar module and the command module um, this bit separates off um, uses atmospheric braking to lose a lot of its velocity which means you don't have to carry the fuel for it of course and then it deploys three parachutes and splashes down in the Pacific somewhere so that little focus so that is the entire Saturn V rocket and the moonshot and on a rather sad note, thanks to the petty posturing and point scoring of politicians in Washington, the US government is currently shut down. Which means if you currently go to the NASA website, the website of the organization that built these incredible machines and used them to put men on the moon, the organization that's built and sent to Mars some of these most incredible robotic rovers, you get this. For me, it's just really sad to see this pointless bickering of politicians shut down, if be only temporarily, an organization with such an incredible legacy.